Hi guys and welcome to Mentimes YouTube channel. My name is Alan Arundhan. And first of all, I hope you got the idea in the last lecture when we spoke specifically about inventory uh, adjustments that you had to do in Titan model. Now let's move on and try to discuss about asset schedule. Now generally, uh, you know this becomes even more important when you are making models for. you know capital intensive companies although in case of titan the assets side is pretty light right not much side uh, not much investment in assets but more in technology but nevertheless it's still important for us to you know make this section for the business right so let's get started by making the asset schedule for titan Hi guys and welcome to the another session. Now, as discussed, we'll now move into forecasting the capex, right? So, in essence, we are talking about that in the balance sheet item. Remember, we spoke about two more entries, which is property plan equipment, and I spoke about gold on loan, right? These are the two things which are uh, significant to you know free cash flow to equity or free cash flow to firm that we're going to be using, and hence we need a way of uh, forecasting. Now, this. a way of uh, forecasting also is pretty similar to uh, you know in any other model that you will uh, make be it titan or be it any other company right so again first is to get our revenue numbers in place so let's get our revenues uh, from our income statement right for all the years even the forecasted values and uh, now what we will do is we'll get our actual prop uh, you know property plan and equipment numbers right which also means that we need beginning and ending values right so i will make it easier for you in the sheet it would have been already entered uh, but when you are doing it for uh, let's say a you know a new company you will have to go to their annual report and you will have to uh, see the opening and closing balance right for the purpose of uh, you know so that you know when you are doing it for another company i will just show you how this is supposed to be done right so i will open a annual report and i'll show you where you can find these numbers okay so since i already know where these numbers are i'm just going to directly take you to the consolidated financial statements out here okay so we are in the consolidated notes so first let me take you to the balance sheet okay so whenever you come to any consolidated balance sheet of any company you will see property plan equipment now these are net asset levels okay net property plan equipment that means it is not really telling you what is the accumulated depreciation what is the gross value of the asset so all that value you can see in note number 3 so let's go to note number 3 okay, so keep on scrolling down and you will come to something like this so this is the proper asset schedule given by the company now there there is also a bifurcation of assets land buildings plan machinery everything right but that's not what is more interesting for us what is more important for us is the gross value so you can see here each section is divided right so you can see here this section is called gross block this section is called accumulated depreciation and this section is called net carrying value right so basically what it means is gross values minus accumulated depreciation is net carrying value right so accumulated depreciation is nothing but across years each and every year whatever depreciation you are assuming in the income statement or whatever you are actually incurring in the income statement gets accumulated right so out here if you see the gross block is also for two years right so as on 31st april 2022 the gross block was 1745 and exactly one year back it is 1516 so why do we need the gross values is because it tells us what the actual addition or capex has actually happened so you can clearly see here between 1745 and 156 1516 there was an addition of 269 crores of assets right now that will not be possible if you are looking at just the net carrying value because if you see the net carrying value it suggests something that 60 crores have been added right so that is what you actually need uh, you know calculated so gross accumulated and net carrying value to be in your asset schedule sheet across years in order for you to do any meaningful calculations since i have already done this calculation i will put in the values directly and you can use it from there 
Okay, as I said that I've already calculated these values and I've not gone as far as 2017 because we really don't need that. But I have adjusted the values, the currencies, etc. Since the units were initially into millions, then got converted into lakhs, then into crores. So I've done the adjustment and you can see here, we've got the gross values, we've got the capex, we've got the disposal and we've got the accumulated depreciation as well. Right. Now, <coughs> what do we do next? So one is understanding the concept that when does the company uh, actually add an asset, right? So we have to look that why will a company add uh, new assets only when the previous year they've seen some results. You will not continuously keep on adding capex, especially in a mature company when you're not seeing results, right? So what you can do as a matrix uh, is also again, this would form as a person, uh, you know, form as uh, framework uh, under the common size analysis. So you do capex divided by previous year sales because you do not do capex, uh, you know, forecasting what the sales will be this year and then doing the capex. Instead, whatever money you had in your previous year, based on that, then you invest in the current year. So if you see here, you will get some, a very uh, standard matrix and it tends to be a little stable value to actually get a sense of what capex the company can actually do. So it's a pretty stable number if you see, right? So I'm going to assume 0.9% as remaining same. And since we now already have uh, the sales number, so we can multiply this with the capex as a percentage of sales, right? Now, what do we do about depreciation? Because we also need depreciation to get the accumulated depreciation values ahead. So now depreciation actually cannot be done as a percentage of sale, but as a percentage of opening block. Okay. So what does opening block mean? It means that, for example, for to FI20, right? So if you are sitting on April of uh, 2020 year, so that means your opening assets is nothing but the net assets for the last year, right? So first is to get the depreciation numbers from the income statement. So let's get the depreciation values here from the anything will do actually even from the income statement balance sheet uh, or, or the cash flow statement doesn't really matter as long as you're getting the right number. Right. So that's for 19. Now what we'll do is since we cannot calculate it for FI 19 instead what we will do it to calculate from 20 onwards. So depreciation as a percentage of opening block. And you'll see again, you get a very, very uh, standard values instead of getting very, <coughs> uh, you know, extreme changes in the value. Right? So 29 to 30, so we can assume somewhere around 30% to be the depreciation rate. Okay. So now uh, we can, uh, disposable, obviously we cannot forecast, so we're not going to do that. But gross PP is going to be last year's gross PP plus the capex. So that's your gross values, right? You can reduce the decimal places slightly, right? Now accumulated depreciation uh, is, as I said, is going to be a percentage of opening block. So that's the opening block, right? And now accumulated depreciation last year's accumulated depreciation plus this year's depreciation, right? And the net value is nothing but going to be gross PP plus capex minus accumulated depreciation. So that's how the value will keep on going forward. Okay. So your net values for the asset schedules have been calculated. Okay. So that's a very, uh, you know, a very, very, uh, you know, you can say a consistent way of calculating depreciation values and also uh, you know, calculating the capex. Okay, so please bear in mind the logic behind it. Okay, so I'm just going to mark it as red so that you understand what we are trying to do. Right? These are our assumptions. Okay, so once you have these values, now let's also try to understand what is going on with gold on loan. Right. So first, let's take the gold on loan values in the balance sheet. Because this is actually somewhat business related uh, and it try to, tries to take these values. Uh, in fact, actually, 
<coughs> okay so golden loan values are there right? now what is golden loan so again you will have to go to the annual report to understand this so let's again go to the balance sheet and see the note what is the note which is going to describe uh, what is going on with golden loan right so you go here in the assets uh, the liability side and you'll see golden loan it is on note number 17.2 okay so let's go to 17.2 to understand what is the breakup so 11 14 17.2 there you go so gold on loan is divided into two parts secured and unsecured okay secured is payable to banks okay and unsecured is also payable to banks but the secured is against the letter of credit inventories and receivables whereas unsecured you can see again there's a note here includes amounts payable against gold purchased from various banks under gold loan scheme the interest rate of the same varies from 1.5 to 3 percent per annum previous year was 1.45 to 2.82 so somewhere around 3 percent uh, is the uh, you can say the interest rate per annum the credit period under the arrangement is 180 days from the date of delivery of gold okay so for now it really doesn't matter for us whether it's secured or unsecured but at the end we understand that around 3 percent between 1.5 and 3 percent is what is the annual interest rate right so uh, if we actually get uh, you know if you are saying that gold loan is if you are saying the interest is going to be somewhere around 3 percent right so let's just take 3 percent as the annual interest rate but how do we forecast how much gold is going to be there in the future right so uh, you can try different methods right so we can try gold as a percentage of inventories right so try to get a sense whether this actually works as a metric so we can say 2018 values uh, so let's divide that by 2018 inventory right and see whether this actually makes sense right so in the recent past somewhere around you know 50 percent very high on 2021 but between 22 and 23 we can clearly see it's at the 30 and 40 percent range right now there's no other metric that i can actually compare this with the uh, apart from inventory because finally this is gold that you're buying right and if we try to get that okay 30 percent of the gold is actually on loan so let's try to take uh, you know somewhat average values of the last three years and say that okay this is going to be uh, the percentage of gold which is going to be on loan right so we can take 41 percent and we can multiply with the inventory values that we're going to have right so I have to multiply that with 2024 values. <coughs> All right, so that's what is going to be the gold on loan values. And that is something that, uh, you know, was important. Apart from this, uh, the interest, of course, the interest expense, we're just going to assume three percent because that's what has been given as the interest expense and let's put that into number right now remember that in income statement the other the finance expenses that are already there as 218 and 300 this is apart from the finance expenses that we're talking in terms of gold loan okay because they also have uh, small liabilities in uh, case of borrowings but we're not really forecasting that because we're not going to affect much. So what we're sticking with is taking it as an addition to the existing finance expenses that they already have. Right. So again, let's put these values into the collect uh, color code. And now let's update these values in the balance sheet, including the 
property planter equipment. So let's go to our balance sheet and link the property planter equipment from asset schedule. Remember to link the net values, do not link the uh, gross values, right? So from 2024 onwards, we have added that. And now let's come to gold loan. So gold on loan, let's again link it from. Right. And uh, finally, uh, we also need to put the depreciation values in income statement. So let's also get to depreciation. Okay. And the finance expenses finally. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to assume the same finance expenses plus. Okay. So 300 will always be there, but I'm going to add the extra finance expenses that are incurred. Okay. So just keeping J35 constant, otherwise it will become too much. Okay. So that's our asset schedule. So we added our net values. We added our capex. Uh, capex automatically comes in the cash flow statement so we don't have to worry about that uh, we added our gold loan so that's our asset schedule right so now in the next session what we'll do is we'll try to uh, you know get all the linkages done and create our cash flow statement which will be pretty close to the end of the titans module